Have you ever had one of those days when it feels like things are just not going your way? It's no fun, is it? Uh, let me tell you a story. A, a couple weeks ago, I was out on an early morning walk. It's my habit to get up early and go exercise before uh, the rest of the neighborhood or the household is awake. And, and I was on my way back home, and I saw, uh, just, uh, I saw uh, just a, a large river of water running down the curb. Now, it's not unusual to see water on the curb or on the street when uh, I'm walking in the morning. Um, oftentimes, from a sprinkler uh, that's uh, just adjusted a bit uh, off. But this was far more than just a sprinkler. This was a medium-sized flood that was coming down the street and almost to the middle. I couldn't tell exactly where it was coming from. It wasn't on my route home, and I thought, I'm just going to let someone else handle that. But that does seem to be a problem here. There's going to be a problem. Something is going wrong. And sure enough, later in the day, I drove by the same place, and I looked down at the block, and there was all kinds of workers uh, there, a vast pit and a whole lot of action. There had been a water main break and there had been several within uh, several blocks of us. Luckily, we, we haven't had one in our yard yet, but a, a water main break, what, what can you do? Well, it, you can't really do anything helpful oftentimes, at least I can't. Um, you can complain, of course, but however, what you really need is to wait until someone that has the right tools the right equipment and the right knowledge to be able to take some action, to do something about it. Now, I want you to go back with me if you want way back to the winter of 2020. I, I don't know about you, but I wasn't planning on a, being part of a global pandemic. W were you? No, of, of course not. And I don't know about you, but, but it feels like a little bit like there's been a water main break in my life over the last 20 months. Things are out of control. I just can't quite have the things that I need to fix it for everyone. But do you remember what that was like? We were here in this space, as some of you were, were here. We were wearing Chiefs gear because they were playing in the Super Bowl that day. They ended up winning that year, um, but, uh, but it was a, a different day, it seems. It was a different day. There have been changes in my life and in yours that, that are just outside of our control. There's been disagreement in our country about whether we should be doing this thing or th that thing. There's been racial tension and political division and uncertainty about how to best stay healthy in the midst of all of it. We have been through a lot as a community and a country over the last 20 months. And perhaps it's time to take a closer look at the practices in our own life, the patterns of our lives as we move together into the future. There will continue to be things that will be outside of our control, and we can make choices to make a positive difference in our lives and in the lives of others, and we can look to the scriptures and ultimately Jesus to give us an example for that. Today we begin a new worship series, A Life That Matters, and over the next several weeks we'll be considering how we live as followers of Jesus amid the realities of today, even those realities that we may have no control over. Together we'll hope to discover ways to grow into a life that matters as individuals and as a community of faith. Today we begin with a story of someone who knew what it was like to have things go wrong in his life. The man's name was Job, and we find his story in the book that shares his name. Now, today's reading from the Old Testament comes in at the very end of the story, the very last of the book of Job, and, and it's a bit uh, into the conclusion. So I want to remind you what has happened for Job up to this point. Job is the main character, and he's a pretty good guy by all accounts. He is righteous, he honors God, and he seems to have his life generally put together. However, life takes a terrible turn for Job. In fact, a series of terrible turns right next to each other. He loses most of his possessions. He, his children die. He himself is afflicted with a, an illness, and, and this is worse than having a water main break in your yard. Now, many of the chapters of the book share the conversation between Job and three of his friends that try to make sense of what's going on in his life. Job claims that he's innocent. There, there's no reason that he should be suffering. This isn't some act of God that's punishing him for some sin. And, and he knows, and we know as a reader that he's right because in the first several chapters, God says the same thing. Job is blameless and righteous. And Job goes back and forth in conversation with his friends, trying to make sense of his situation and what he believes about God. Finally, he demands an answer directly from God directly. 
Then in the side of response from another friend to whom Job doesn't even respond, we finally hear an answer, a voice out of a whirlwind, and that's where we find our passage for today. Now, in the midst of these last 20 months, it's felt a little bit like Job for me, just some sense. I'm trying to understand what's happening around me. I can't really do it. I try to share a conversation with friends about the latest news, and, and we can't really make sense out of it together um, or figure out what's the best way to proceed. We do our best. We're all doing our best, and yet we don't know for certain. And, and here we are making our way through life and asking, why, oh God, are these things happening? And I'd like to hear an answer directly from, jo- from God. Now, in the scripture passage for today, God does respond directly to Job. In the passage before us, God takes Job on a virtual tour of the universe. Do you know what we need here? I almost wish we had a, an audio version of the book of Job. I don't want, mean one that was recorded. Um, Christina did a lovely job reading for us, but, but I want to go back and hear what was God's voice like? What was Job's question like? A live recording of the conversation between Job and the voice of God. Can you imagine what it would have been like to actually hear these words spoken out loud instead of reading them in a text? What was the shape of God's voice? What is God's mood when God is responding to Job with these words? Oftentimes, perhaps, when we read this text, we imagine that God is angry, shouting at Job for daring to question God's work in the world and in Job's life in particular. Who is this darkening counsel with words lacking knowledge? That doesn't sound like a really friendly God's response to Job here. And there's perhaps plenty of evidence that this is a harsh, booming, divine wind of a voice that flattens trees and levels the mountains as it talks about these very same pieces of creation. The, the whole thing it comes to Job out of a whirlwind. You don't get a nice pat on the back or an encouraging thumbs up from a tornado. It just doesn't happen. But I want you, if you take the time to read this chapter and the several that surround it, Really, you'll find an incredible description of the wonder and beauty of creation. God is answering Job by offering a change in perspective. The universe is a vast and complex place, and God's power upholds everything in it. Job's view is limited, and he's not in a position to accuse God of being unjust. Perhaps this whirlwind is not the destructive tornado that punishes and destroys. Instead, It may be a new wind that's blowing in a new vision of God, a reminder that indeed God does have everything in God's hands and that God continues to be at work in the world. God answers Job in a way that that perhaps upends his expectations, and it seems oftentimes this is the way that God works. This is how Jesus responds in the gospel, according to Mark, when James and John ask to sit at his right and left when Jesus enters his glory. He says to them, first of all, you don't know what you're asking, do you, James and John? I imagine Jesus saying, what are you thinking? Do you know what's coming up for me? Can you drink the cup that I drink or receive the baptism that I receive? Are you sure that you really want to make your way to the cross? All right. (laughs) Well, maybe you are. Or at least you say that you are now, but this isn't mine to choose. Who's going to sit at my right and my left? James and John were expecting one thing, and they got something else. Now, what about the other ten disciples that heard about James and John's little request to Jesus on the side? I imagine they got frustrated, a little bit exasperated about this whole situation. Who made you king over us? Why do you get to ask Jesus who's going to be on the right and the left? Maybe I wanted to sit on Jesus' right and left. But then Jesus again gathers them all together and says, friends, you've got this all wrong. Let me tell you how things are actually going to be. So let me read you again these words from uh, verses 42 through 45. Jesus called them over and said, You know that the ones who are considered the rulers by the Gentiles show off their authority over them, and their high-ranking officials order them around. But that's not the way it will be with you. Whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the human one didn't come to be served, but rather to serve and to give his life to liberate many people." 
James and John had in mind a place of honor and high rank. Now, do you ever want that in your own life? (laughs) Do you ever wish that you could just skip over all the chaos in the world around us? I know that I wish I could sometimes. Sometimes I find myself unintentionally expecting God to act from my own limited perspective and in my best interest. Jesus reminds James and John, me, and maybe you too, that whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you will be the slave of all, for the human one didn't come to be served, but rather to serve and give his life to liberate many people. The good news is that God doesn't act how we expect God doesn't look at the world the way that we look at the world. God's vision is broader than our own. God's love is far more profound than our own expectations. So even if the water main breaks in your yard, or we can't make our way out of this pandemic anytime soon, whatever it might be, I invite you to bring your struggle and your pain and your grief to God. Trust that God actually cares for you, even in the middle of suffering. And remember that God honors our desire to be in relationship, to share a conversation, to bring what we have to God in prayer. God can do far more than we can ask or imagine. And no matter our circumstances, God walks with us and invites us to live a life of service to others Even when we feel that everything is going wrong in our life, we can find a life that matters. Will you pray with me? Oh God, thank you for being at work in our lives, even when they feel like they're falling apart. We confess that we too often want things our way, and so we ask that you remind us of your perspective that we become a part of your kingdom coming on earth instead of asking for your help in our desires. God, turn our world upside down by your love. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.